Tyler, Texas. We're going to Tyler, and we're going to do a town hall meeting in Tyler in, I think, towards the end of October. Uh, so be, be everybody uh, look out for our town hall schedule that should be on uh, the website at Financial Issues and AFA Foundation dot net uh, website as well. Hey, Luke. Dan, pleasure being with you. I'm uh, asking for your personal opinion on my fin- financial situation. i um, praying that uh, you'll give me some timely and helpful advice here. So okay. brief synopsis. Um, I'm roughly about 31, married, child, uh, single, uh, household income. Um, I'm in the healthcare industry. I've read, you know, Twyla Braves and Betsy McCoy's book, uh, so I'm a little concerned about my longevity of, of my future status being in the healthcare with Obamacare, et cetera. Um, mm-hmm. But our financial situation is, you know, we're we're out of debt, no debt. We do have a checking uh, and an emergency fund. Uh, I do have a 401k and a simple IRA. I do have um, some cash in a Fidelity Roth holding, and I'm not exactly sure what to do with that, um, but I, I, I roughly have about fifty to $70,000 to invest, and, and I'd like to get your advice on uh, whether you think it's um, prudent to get into some property management or if I should invest that in maybe some large comp- company stock or just continue to put that into a Roth uh, Fidelity uh, IRA or or, or uh, what would you do if you were in my position with with uh, the situation yep. that I've given you, Luke? Um, that cash that you have is that mm-hmm. over and above uh, any kind of emergency savings you might have, or or would that be a part of that? Uh, it would be over and above. Okay, so here's uh, here's what I I I think um, I like the idea. If you can deal with being a landlord, I like the idea of thinking about some some real estate investing. Uh, I think it is uh, a, a great way to. And now, here's here's what I would say to you: the 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 value of it for someone like you right now needs to be, and it's only going to be what you're going to receive by way of income. So if you can buy, a, uh, let's say you bought a place for $100,000, you can generate a positive cash flow. Maybe you're putting a significant amount of money down. You're going you're gonna, to uh, get maybe a 15-year mortgage if you can swing that and still have a positive cash flow. The, the benefits of that is it's certainly, if you're able to maintain it and keep it going, it's going to help your retirement someday. Even if it's an early retirement, it's going to help your retirement someday because it's going to get, you know, you're not going to have any debt on it. It's going to, it's going to bring a, a pretty good income. I don't think that you ought to do it because the piece of property that you buy is going to appreciate dramatically in value and you're going to have this great deal of wealth in that regard and you'll be able to sell it. I wouldn't want you to do it for that reason because I'm not convinced that's going to happen over the next 10 years, but it will probably over the next 25. So I think that's an alternative. I would probably consider that. Having said that, I've never considered it because I can't deal with the thought of being a landlord and I'm very, very comfortable uh, in the stock market and getting growth that way. Uh, I'm not comfortable with, uh, you know, dealing with uh, those kinds of issues. But I probably wish I were uh, someday, if I ever, which I don't ever plan on, but if I ever retire, I may wish wish I were. So that's a great alternative. It's something I think you ought to consider and look around. I don't know what the real estate market is like in your area, and I don't know what the rental market is. Now, let me just give you the risk of that, the downside. The downside of that is the economy. And it's not because, well, I've got my, pl- you know, I've got my piece, and I got it at a good price. I don't really care. I'm getting an income from it. The, the, the risk is that the income could stop. Because remember, the, the renters that you have, have to be able to pay rent, which means they have to have a job, uh, and they have to be working. So y- you run a risk of if the uh, economy ever really got bad, you'd be in a situation where, um, you know, you might not be able to get a tenant. 
if you don't have any debt on the property, you can work with the tenant. You can work with the people, and that's, that's a good thing, but you're, then your income's reduced. So that's the, that's the real downside to it, um, so other than the usual. Go ahead. So it, Go ahead, Luke. All things, all things being equal, what, is, what, in your opinion, is more risky? Property management and trying to you know, manage that building, um, staying full, uh, or given the current market situation uh, long term? I would say that long, even long term, the, the, the risk, just strictly from a risk factor, that the, there's probably a little less risk in the real estate side, just strictly from a risk standpoint. And I'm not talking about risk of loss or gain necessarily. I think just stability, uh, not as volatile. Uh, I think that the the property management situation may may be less volatile than the markets. But having said that, you're 31 years old. If this is long term, and depending on what you get, let's say you're following my picks on my website, and and you're and you've got some money that you want to get. So I, I'm uh, invest, and I'm looking. You know, and you and you go and you look at my my current buy list. I've got companies on there like John Deere, right now this this week. I have John Deere, I have Conoco Phillips, uh, Cracker Barrel, Ford, Lowe's, um, uh, Valero. Those companies aren't going anywhere, in my opinion. There is there a risk of volatility. Certainly, I've been telling everybody. I believe that oil company and oil related stocks could be going. Down, uh, be volatile on the downside over the next six months to a year. So certainly that's a possibility. But, you know, all in all, uh, you know, if you're 31 and you're looking at monies that you're setting aside until you're uh, 60, 61, I, I would not have a problem buying any of those companies I mentioned as long as you're okay living with the volatility until you're ready to use it. And when it comes down, you're still able to contribute and buy some more stocks. So uh, from, from my liking, if I were in your situation and you asked the question, what would I do? Uh, I like the idea from a long-term retirement benefit standpoint that owning a piece of property outright can bring. I like that. I think it's great from an income standpoint. Ultimately, I love income. And ultimately, I love to be thinking about in- income uh, as I head into retirement. So, uh, I, I, you know, I like that. But me, personally, what I would do is I'd go on the market because that's what I know b- best. That's what I'm most comfortable with. And I, and I feel good about good, solid companies like an ExxonMobil that's uh, not on my buy list, by the way, but like an ExxonMobil that's not going anywhere. Even if governments around the world collapse, ExxonMobil's not going anywhere. Uh, so, you know, they're the kinds of, of, of solid things that I like if – you're okay understanding that there's going to be some volatility and that you can be disciplined enough to buy more on the downside as opposed to panicking and just leave it alone, continuing to contribute on a regular basis. So if I had $50,000, would I put it all in at once? No, but I would probably take 10000 and I would establish some positions uh, you know, soon and just establish a few companies. I would probably take uh, another 10000 you know, next month, and I would add to those positions. Uh, in another two months, I would take another ten thousand. I would uh, I would buy in, maybe buy another position if if something there. Maybe you get an alert from me that says you got to. This is a great company. You got to buy into it or something like that. But other than that, add into the positions, do it again. You know, and by the end of the year, you have it all in into some good solid positions. I think that's a great strategy. If you did nothing, but never put another nickel into it. I think you'd be in great shape in 25 years. But I would suggest that you continue to contribute to those positions. And I think that's a great strategy. Okay. Does that help you, Luke, or confuse you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope sir. It just got to continue okay. to do research. And, and where would you suggest that I go? If if I want to get into property management, what, what's, what's the first step to take in terms of going down that path in terms of investments? Right. The first, the first step you have to take is um, – 
find a realtor in your area that you can trust that's going to tell okay. you the truth. And a realtor that isn't a, somebody that is buying homes, but is someone that's actively in the management uh, business. In other words, they take a property that you buy and they manage it for you for 5% or 10%, whatever they charge, and you know, that's actively involved in, the, in, the air, in your area in, in management. Someone that you can trust, and maybe someone in your church is doing that, or someone in your church can, is in real estate business that can tell you who to talk to. But that's your first step, and to really try to talk with someone that you feel very comfortable with that's telling you the truth. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Luke.